Today, we're updating my legendary investment tier list using the insights not only from battling in KVK, but also from watching the Osiris League Grand Prix teams. This is the best of the best with access to any commander they want. What are they using? And also, we'll talk about the new archers that are right around the corner because I think this changes where you would put sculptures today. So stick around in this video for the updates to the legendary investment tier list. These are the best commanders to invest in in Rise of Kingdoms. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chisco Gaming, and as you know from my videos, I think it's really important to invest your legendary commander sculptures into the commanders that represent the future of the open field meta and Rise of Kingdoms, not the ones that are on their way out. So in this video, we're going to update the legendary tier list based off of my insights battling in KVK from Osiris League Grand Prix players, and also, as I said, new archers are around the corner, and I have some theories around what that's going to look like and how this impacts the list. And if you're watching this video for the first time, you haven't seen my monthly updates to the legendary investment tier list, the way we divide this up is as follows. The top priority are the commanders that you start with. Like, if you haven't maxed all those commanders, go back to start, look up at that top row, and that's where you should be putting your sculptures pretty much nowhere else, and there's very few times there's an exception. From there, we talk about low priority. It's like, all right, you max the top priority, good stuff. You're getting enough sculptures to do more commanders and be ready for the next meta, good for you, low priority is where you go. Before Season of Conquest is what you would work on before KVK Season 3. The niche role commanders are the ones that do very specific things. You really need to know exactly what you're doing. If you're going to invest sculptures into one of those commanders, you're probably doing it wrong if you don't know exactly why. There's value to do these over those ones up top, or you're just a whale and you're cruising through tons of commanders, separate matter entirely. Then there's the just no category. I'm like, these are commanders that you should not invest in. There's no good reason for it anymore. The only way you'd pick these up is if you're spinning the wheel because you're wailing like a beast and like you don't actually care about using them but you want to get their auxiliary skills for kvks and then lastly you get the free commanders like look they come from gold keys just get them for free all right um or they come from i don't know like you've got ethel flood over here you can get her for free from the expedition store separate matter entirely so let's first talk about Liucha and gorgo did they stack up to where I thought they would stack up? And I would say Liu Che is a beast. He's a total beast. Would I say he's maybe even higher priority than Skippy Prime? I'm honestly tempted to do it because in terms of investment quality, I think he will be with us for a very long time and bring a lot of value for a very long time. So I might shift their prioritization a little bit. Like, I think Liu Che is going to be a beast for a long, long, long time. But I do think all of those commanders still are top priority commanders. They stay there. But there is one commander I need to change. And this commander shocked me. And that is Gorgo. Now, I said, hey, Gorgo's kind of niche role. She's a garrison, okay? But I used her in the field. And I used her in the field with a garrison build, all right? Now, you say, oh, why'd you do that? Well, because like one minute I'm garrisoning, one minute I'm fielding, then I'm garrisoning again, then I'm fielding, then I'm rallying, then I'm garrisoning, then I'm fielding, then I'm rallying, then I'm garrisoning, right? So like I'm doing all kinds of stuff. If I switched her talent build, I'd be spending thousands of gems on resets, and maybe I should have just been doing that, but I just used her with whatever build she had in the field, and she was crushing it. Like it was shocking to me how much she was able to get done. Now, the problem is that it's a one-way street here. You basically use Gorgo, Liu Che, that's it. That's 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 it. If you're going to run Gorgo in the field, that's what you do. And I thought it was absolutely spectacular. So I actually, based off of that, would bump her up to low priority. You are getting a commander that can field super well and also garrison. You don't get that very often. In fact, when have we gotten that? Amani, who's now in the just no category. So, I mean, maybe one day Gorgo will also make it back to the just no category, but she's even got a skill that, if I remember correctly, is like reducing the normal attack damage of the target. So like good for swarming garrisons, reduces the attack of five marches in the field when you're below 50%. Like, yeah, I think Gorgo goes up here. I think she's really good. Shockingly good. Now we'll have to see how she prioritizes against some of these other low priority commanders, but let's talk about that for a second. I am going to demote 
a low priority commander. And it's not because I think they're bad. It's that I think we're about to get some really crazy options. And we're about to get Asher Benipal, presumably in the next two to four weeks, and also Herman Prime. So these commanders, if they follow the model of maybe adding Smite, which they could do, and making it so that both the rally and the garrison, or, and, sorry, the rally and the field commander are both really good in the field, then like, should you be putting sculptures into Boudicca Prime now? I'm not saying Boudicca Prime is bad. And remember, there's a huge difference in understanding this is an investment tier list, not a punch level tier list exactly. Like, these commanders punch hard. Like, Guan Yu hits really hard. He's still great. But he's not bad investment now because, like, you've got so many other infantry that are really good and are going to last for, like, a really long time, right? So I feel like, and I'm inclined to, bump Boudicca Prime down to niche roll for now. Now, look, if you're using three archer pairs, then, like, you're not going to do anything with your, your Boudicca Prime. You're just going to keep using her, right? But if you're only using one archer pair or two archer pairs, then like, I think she'll still be a commander that you use, but she's, she is the fourth commander out at that point. And anytime the commander is like the fourth commander in, in the, you know, type of troop, I get worried about recommending investing in them, right? So I think this list is going to have Herman Prime and Asher Benipal in low priority and top priority, I suspect which means that Boudicca Prime becomes the fourth archer at that point. And fourth archer is a risky investment unless you have three archer marches. That is my prediction, right? And a part of my goal here is to be predictive and sort of where the meta is going. So with that said, can I really have four infantry in the top priority, low priority? And I think the answer is no. So one of those commanders has to bump out. I'm not moving Skippy Prime and Liu Chat. The two of those together in that order is what most people are using if they bring only one infantry march. And a lot of people are doing that. Uh, people are also bringing two infantry marches, and it's, you know, going to include Guan and Sargon. It's really tough to say. I mean, I literally just was inclined to br bring Gorgo up, and I either need to move Sargon or Gorgo out. And it's actually really tough to decide. What I think I'm going to do until we get the new archers that show up, this is just until we see what the new archers do, assuming the game is shoving us in the direction of smite damage, which means skill damage becomes less and less effective, for now, I'm inclined to put Sargon over here. This is like a very temporary play, a very temporary. So we go like this. So, so what am I actually saying here? I think what I'm saying is that if you're making two infantry marches, right, you'd pair Gorgo with Liu Cha in the open field, and then you'd use Skippy with one of a variety of commanders, and you're in a great spot. And that the ability to get both a garrison plus fielder is super valuable. Now, Sargon is still insane if you're swarming garrisons. And let me real, be really, really clear that if you're the kind of player who is swarming garrisons, Sargon is a must bring. Just like Tommy is a must bring. People think, wait, really? Well, look, I, I was following Yoda 808 all KVK long, and he was swarming garrisons, trading positive two for one, three for one, four for one. Sometimes he trades negative too, right? That, like, of course, the tanking march, if he's tanking with a swarm, is going to trade negative. But he brings Tommy, and he brings Tommy for the skill damage taken debuff. Now, skill damage taken debuffs are super valuable as long as we don't get more smite damage commanders, but like, Spoiler alert, I think we're going to get more of them. I mean, why would we not get... Why would they introduce Smite and be like, yeah, it's just an inf thing? Maybe. I mean, maybe. But I think we're going to get more Smite commanders. So in the spirit of predicting more Smite commanders, we move Sargon down. I'm not saying he's bad. I'm not going to stop using him. But I'm just saying if you started putting sculptures into a commander today, I don't know that Sargon would be a better invest than Gorgo, who is both garrison and just crazy trades in the field i mean the thing about gorgo liu cha is that like they boost their normal attack so if they get swarmed fine you're doing tons of counterattack damage from the elevated normal attack boost and you 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 wreck the people that are hitting you it's it's actually shocking i mean look 
I, I put Gorgo at the bottom of low priority. I think all those other low priority commanders are better, as well as the top priority. And let's talk about that for a second. We watched the Osiris League Grand Prix. And you know who didn't make their cut for infantry? Sargon. You know who doesn't make their cut for archers? I mean, they, they use a little bit of Boudicca Prime, Boudicca Zuge Leong, but they were mostly using cavalry. Like, the Grand Prix is a tournament format where the best players in the game are slugging it out across the international servers, the Chinese servers, and you can use whatever commanders you want. You have them all. It's a special test uh, play environment, right? So they use four cavalry marches. One of them is Ethel Trajan and then three cav marches. And they, if they bring anything else besides that, they brought infantry mostly, Skippy Prime and Liu Cha. And rarely did you see on the field a Boudicca Prime Zugi Leong, rarely. So what, what does this tell us? Well, if you want to also be good at ARC and KVK, great news. Like, you just skew your investments to cavalry. Easy choice. So cavalry, weirdly enough, are a better invest relative to other troop types if you care about ARC. And also, you want to do fine, like, do you want to do fine in KVK? You do just fine <laughs> with Huo, Nevsky, Joan Prime, great commanders. So I almost think we could even bring another cav commander up. And I'm almost tempted for that Cav commander to be Justinian. And I'm not going to do it because he doesn't actually have a great debuff in the field. Whereas, you know, look, you actually are getting some good debuffs with Gorgo. So I'm going to leave him here in the niche role. But Justinian is proving to be both good in the field and also, of course, a killer rally. Now, if you're bringing three cavalry marches, it seems that people are using Nevsky and Joan. They're using Huo and William, and you're subscribed to the channel. You've been seeing my videos. You know that guidance already. But then the third march is going to be XY and Justinian, the two of them together. And that's your third Cav march, and it's super strong. So I've, I've actually been surprised at how good Justinian has been for a lot of people in the field. Now, we can very briefly review some of the other commanders that are here in the niche role, because I think some of these I'm going to shift around. And the... First thing I want to do is talk about a couple commanders. I think Nebu, still really strong. I used Nebu and Zuge Leong. They freaking slap, man. So very happy with them. I think Henry is also super strong, right? You want more archers? The All these commanders are actually really good. Boudicca Prime is still really strong. Um, you know, I'm just questioning, do you invest in her? And so the commander I actually move out of this list is going to be Artemisia. I think we need to... Stop investing in Artemisia. If you have her, you use her. I mean, I just used her in KVK. She was great. Very happy with her performance. Not so good for swarming a garrison. But most people aren't going to do that. But I think at this moment in time, you have too many good archers, and we expect more new archers to come that are just going to be better. So I have to move her out of the niche role category. Also, I really want to move Alexander the Great out of here. Like, he's just not meta in the open field anymore. He's not really seeing a lot of use, and people are moving away from infantry marches, it seems, anyways. But I'm not going to move him because his niche role is if you are a whale in early KVKs, it's a, it's a fine commander you could work on, all right? He's going to be fine. Attila and Takeda, still doing work. As I mentioned, Tommy's doing work. William is still part of the meta, but, you know, like, would I invest in him right now? So he's a great long-term investment. I'd say his damage factor is a little low. His effect is amazing, man. Um, generating rage and defense for your team is crazy good. Just like, would I put sculptures in him today? I don't know about that. And the next commander we've got to bump down is actually Chandra Gupta. I mean, look, at this point, we've already got plenty of commanders that are cavalry that are good. Nevsky, Joan Prime, Huo, Justinian, XY, William, like, bro, I can't, I can't recommend that many cavalry, all right? So he gets bumped down. Your garrisons over here are all still kicking. Um, the only garrison there I'm going to say, actually, I don't think you invest in him anymore, is going to be Flavius. Flavius, uh, I mean, I have him. Didn't use him all KVK. We used Gorgo. We used Hera. Zeno saw use. Flavius is just like falling off the deep end, and it's really weird that that has happened. I don't quite understand why that is. 
but it just with the new smite commanders, it's not doing what we need it to do. It just isn't. Uh, in terms of the other commanders that are here that are not garrisons, I'm actually going to leave Gilga. Yo, Gilga for swarming garrisons is still a thing. It's still a Xeno counter. As long as Xeno's around, you're going to see Gilgamesh because he's he is the answer, the answer to a Xeno. And Tarek Ibn Ziyad is still a pretty solid rally. So I feel like the niche role category is nice and cleaned up. We're ready for the Ashurbanipal meta whenever that may come. But that brings us to the just no category. And these commanders, I would say my opinion of them has not changed, but I'll call out a few highlights. First of all, I'll call out that Ethelflaed Trajan is what every Grand Prix team is using. And they're using full cavalry. Now, I think leadership gear is in a weird place. I can't recommend investing in leadership right now until we like really understand if field leadership will continue to be a thing. I feel like it probably will not be. So field leadership is like something I'm steering people away from until we see more field leadership commanders. And I don't know that we ever will. So I'm moving folks away from that. I'd be very happy to recommend it again once we actually see where that's going and we see what the changes are to the equipment system. Another call out I'm going to make here is we did see Honda and Bertrand and also Saladin in the Grand Prix teams. That's right. The Grand Prix winning teams, some of them are using those commanders because like, they needed to get to, I would assume, uh, four plus cavalry marches, maybe even five. So for special operations, those were getting used, but I still would not recommend that you invest in them. And then lastly, we did see a small amount of Yadviga of all commanders show up in the Grand Prix. Do I think, however, they're a good investment? No, I do not. So in terms of the free commanders over here, I do feel like we're seeing super elevated relevance of Charles Martel as an anti-swarm garrison. Turns out shielding plus counterattack works pretty damn well, and the museum bluff, uh, bluff, the museum buff on Charles Martel is delivering great value. Of course, Mehmed is still kicking, and like those museum buffs are super strong. Uh, otherwise, I mean, Pyrrhus is fine, but not, we're not really seeing him get used with infantry. He's, he's not doing enough for the open field, same is true with Thutmose. Like, they're fine. Really good in early KVKs. Like, really good. If you're a whale, you would go for it. But this list is re it's really not a whale list. It's for low spend and free to play players to understand, like, hey, these commanders are really performant. My only hesitation in recommending Gorgo, and I know this is a little weird, is she doesn't have march speed. If she had march speed, or area of effect damage. I feel like people would really be keying into her. And I will say, look, I moved Gorgo up to low priority because she does so much, but it could be that that we bump her down in a month or so. I don't I don't know. Back to niche role. It's hard to say. I mean, she could be so countered by the archers that show up that we're like, actually, she sucks as a garrison now. And like, that's entirely possible. So if you want to see ultimately what that looks like, subscribe to the channel. I'll definitely update this list again. I'll point out my three commanders that I'm the least confident in are the Boudicca Prime, the Sargon the Great, and the Gorgo. But I actually overall am pretty confident with this list. I mean, if you're looking for, hey, Chisco, what commanders do I invest in? The six best investment choices in this order are Zuge Liang, Liu Che, Nevsky, Skippy Prime, Joan Prime, and Huo. And if you wanted another one, Gorgo is just looking really good right now. Great in the field and a crazy good garrison. Crazy good? I mean, I, she's not... I don't think she's broken. I, I do think she's good, especially if you can get full infantry for an anti-swarm situation. That, to me, feels like her true niche, and that anti-swarm element carries in the open fields that even when you're losing in the field and getting swarmed out, she's doing so much counterattack damage that, like, you still trade really well, which is kind of weird. So if you enjoyed the vid, throw a like on here. Consider subscribing. We've got changes coming to the equipment system. As I mentioned, iconic tiers. In case you missed my reaction to that very important announcement, I'll have a card in the end screen in just a second. I do hope that you'll check that out. It is very critical for your account development.